So today we're looking at the hottest, the most desirable item that we sell right now, something I source down specifically all of the time. It makes us a phenomenal amount of money every single time I find them. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at one of our best niches out there, one of the highest ROI items I ever get all the time across the board. We're going to show you a few items here, something that I pick up quite regularly, and it's basically items from China in general. We'll look at some very nice items, some that should sell for hundreds of dollars a piece that we sourced out. If you dig in enough, you go to enough places, you're going to run into this. I've sold paper, just pieces of paper from China from the 20s, 30s, and 40s for over a thousand bucks a piece on many occasions. If you've watched my channel, you've seen me show them, you've seen videos on some of these items as well. Picked up another batch. This is the third batch of these sorts of things that I found in the last 40 days. So it's not something you're never going to find. This is a routine item paper, postcards, menus, really unique items. Anything Kowloon is something I look for as well. Uh, the Walled City, it's something that doesn't exist. When something has been destroyed, torn down, they usually carry a higher value. Any of the stuff I'm going to show you here today are very desirable. Now, I don't want you to just to take my word for it. I recommend everybody out there going to Terapeak. Go to Terapeak on eBay through the hub and look up Chinese menu, look up Chinese postcard, look up Chinese uh, photo, look up Chinese label, all of those types of items, Chinese stamps, uh, postal items in general, Chinese buttons, anything from vintage China goes for some phenomenal money, coin stamps, envelopes, covers, all that stuff. So I honestly and sincerely recommend everybody out there dig into it for yourself if you seriously want to learn about something. Don't, again, just take my word for it. Look up the prices. You can see that the prices I'm going to give you on the items I'm going to show you are comparable with what we've sold them for as well as what they're selling for right this very second. So here's a little stack of paper, and this is all from China. It's all probably 1930s or before. Now, I picked up a whole bunch of stuff. There was a bunch of junk with this as well. Not just junk, but postcards from U.S., from Japan, um, from a trip to Manila, going up until like 1942-ish and stuff. Now, I picked out, obviously, everything I thought I could make money off on. Uh, and then I've since separated all the ones from China because what I will do is obviously list all the ones from China first. I list the high dollar stuff, I'll get all my money back, the rest of it can sit there, and who cares if it takes a little while to sell. Now, some of these are directly related to some of the items that are in here. Now, this may not look like much. Uh, it's a restaurant menu, Now I've touched it up a little bit because there was some issues. I didn't want anything else happening to it. I've shown stuff like that before. Um, again, I'm just preserving it, but anyway, this is a menu on one side, and on the other side is the Del Monte Cafe in Shanghai, China. And this is actually the Del Monte Cafe. So this is actually where they were picked up together at the same place. This right here, even in not perfect condition, it has what looks like maybe some autographs as well in a few spots on here from some of the people at some of these performances. But it goes into a lot of depth and history in the 20s in Shanghai. Something like this I could conceivably get 250 bucks for. And I don't just have one. I actually have two varying conditions. This one's not so bad either. Same place, the Del Monte Cafe. If you don't pay attention and you just look at it, it doesn't look like much. You may miss that it says Shanghai. It looks like anything else. It's in English. There's, n there's no other reference on this of the location other than right there. And some of them, it may be buried inside it. If you looked at this side here, there's nothing that says, hey, this is probably from China. Nothing in here whatsoever if you're not paying attention. Uh, only foreign ham used. So anyway, that's the only thing. It could mean anything from anywhere. So those are just some good items that we would always purchase. What also I always look for are labels. And again, if you've watched my channel, I've sold labels from China for in the 250 to 275 range each. 
Now these aren't super, super scarce, at least this one isn't. This one should get me about 34, 50 to maybe 45 bucks on a good day. Now you can look them up. You'll see in good condition that they range in the 24 to say 40 buck, very, very most range, but on average 34, 50. Now this is Palace Hotel, and it's for a very specific uh, reason here, Empress of Russia. So this is like a double one. This one's for the hotel, and it's a luggage label for a steamship liner from Shanghai as well. This one doesn't show up very much. This one could easily get me, say, 50 to 125 bucks, somewhere in that range. I'll probably put this one up for 250 and just see what happens. You'll be surprised. That may sound like crazy prices, but we sell these types of things like that all the time. Last year we sold a ID, just a piece of paper ID from China for just a hair around a thousand dollars. So postcards as well, any of these sorts, all of these are China, Chinese cities. There is one from Kowloon. Railways as well. This is the railway station in Kowloon. Excellent card. It's hand tinted as well. So it's got a lot going for it on these sorts of cards. Excellent, excellent Primo ones. Any of these sorts we do phenomenally well with. Again, all China. I've had some of these before. They do sell tourist cards is basically what some of these are. Another railroad station one. So just the cards, just the cards alone right here, they could easily get me six or seven hundred bucks, even more than that. One of these could go for two, two fifty, three hundred, four hundred dollars. We've also sold RPPCs, real photo, real picture postcards from China and Kowloon and city scenes into the hundreds quite often. Four or five hundred dollars is not below the mark at all on some. Some have sold over a thousand dollars for photos and postcards as well. And along the themes of the menus, any menu that I run into, I grab up. And again, if you're not looking, you just look at one side. Nothing on this side of this piece right here says it all as to where this was taken, where this is from, what what establishment it is. You look into here, and even the company does not look like anything other than like a British or something. But in, in this era, this time frame, you would see a lot of this stuff advertising to the, a lot of the foreigners and tourists in there. Uh, in Shanghai, it was like a universal city. Uh, there was different zones, basically, from different countries. So a lot of the stuff may have been run by other folks. And this is from the 20s. It has uh, November 17th, 1922 down here on the bottom. So you can readily date this one, but you really got to pay attention. Look at the logos. Look at the fact that it has Shanghai up there. Someone may look at this and not pay attention and see Tiffin and think it's Tiffin, Ohio. But that's probably like uh, an organization name or, say, a specific dining room, the Tiffin Dining Room or something along that line. If you look on eBay, as I said you should all do, you're going to see, again, that this basically almost an identical one sold in the $75 range. We've sold these up to $250, $275 each. Again, these are early. You've got to go by date. You've got to go by if there's good stuff on the back. Uh, and it, some of these are very, very well uh, accepted. Now, one of the items we have actually has this person, Adele Blood, signature on it. It's an autograph in another booklet, which we're having checked out right this minute. But this all ties in together. It's all from the same time frame, provenance, and the whole work. So it's easy to get some decent money. With stuff like this, too, I would always list it all together at the same time. Not in the same lot, but list them all separately. Uh, just even like this big menu here from the same place, Astor House Hotel. It's a Thanksgiving menu. Uh, not in super condition, but it is uh, looks to be complete. It has interesting content and the whole works. I'd list these all at the same time. So 20, 30 listings worth. List them all up as quick as possible so that they're up. So as well, put a notice in your listing stating, hey, I've got other items from the same time frame from China up as well. You'll be surprised if I have an interest to one of these items, chances are the same person would collect and be into the rest of these items that I'll be listing all together, all at the same time, I should say. But this is the hottest niche that we sell in. This routinely gets us some of the highest profit margins, ROIs on our items across the board every single time we get them. It's usually fairly cheap to acquire. The condition-wise isn't always a major, major factor. And something like uh, uh, Town Views from like Kowloon, a city that doesn't exist anymore, can sell for some phenomenal money. There are a couple in this lot, so it's something that I would always, always hunt down. It's the best niche, the highest profit margin items that we always routinely sell. 
Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.